Good evening, everyone. I, Dr. Priya Vani, on behalf of Academia IPSM, would like to welcome you all on this PG lecture series on eConnect platform. As we all know, district residency program is on the rollout these days. So we have a lot of doubts, lot of concepts which need to be cleared. So today we have gathered here to get this concept clear with us and to guide us today on this, we have none other than Dr. K. Madan Gopal, advisor PHA, NHSRC, MOHFW, former senior consultant, health at Niti Ayo. Sir, without, without wasting any second, I will, I will give the mic over to you so that we can know about district residency program. Okay, thank you, Vani. It's a great opportunity to connect uh, with uh, the colleagues in, at PH, uh, uh, IAPSM colleagues. It's a great opportunity. I will just give a background before I start sharing my slide presentation. One of the background is, uh, as you have witnessed, that we have launched the Ayushman Bharat Health and Wellness Centers. We are envisaging that key that would be covering the health and wellness aspect. We have launched the Ayushman Bharat BMJ program. And simultaneously, lot many reforms have happened. We have to look at the district residency program from the reform perspective. As we have seen, we are focusing on increasing the number of uh, medical graduates. And the numbers are there. From uh, uh, the meager 60,000, now we are reaching more than 1 lakh of intake uh, of medical doctors. Then the PG seats also from here 20,000, now we are nearing 50,000. So that numbers. So don't go with the other the actual number. Actual numbers will be very good because we are not discussing that. But the overall, we have to emphasize that why this reform was conceptualized, why it was needed, and why we are interested that this reform is rolled out in the letter and spirit, uh, what has been envisaged in this. Because as if we don't know the uh, logic behind why this program has come, then obviously, once it comes to implementation, a lot of uh, discussions and other things usually happen and the things get diluted. That's why these two backgrounds I have given. We are constructing around, uh, we have upgraded the sub center to health and wellness centers, which would be providing from six set of services, 12 set of services. As we have shifted our approach from primary care to comprehensive primary care, including uh, migrating from six services to 12 services, assured services from this. Though we are in a different phase, the work is in progress, different phase of implementation. So around seven services, assured services have been provided. Some of the places, more services have been provided. That's one thing. Second thing, we are providing an assurance sub coverage to 50, 50 crore population, the true PMJ program. This is the assurance because as a part of uh, universal health coverage, that means how to avoid the financial catastrophe due to health events. This program is there. There are many other programs that the government is having. These two programs we should remember so that we can appreciate why district uh, residency program is important. If the PMJ program is rolled out in totality, if you look at the NSSO data, the household consumption on health expenditure or health is around 3%. 3% hospitalization we, any, at any point in a particular year can happen. Had this 50 crore population, if they experience the 3% 3, 3 hospitalization, do we have the adequate resources to cater to that or not? We have expanded to 1.7 like this. You are having around 5,500 community health centers and four times the number of primary health centers. These are the numbers which are going to increase with the focus of uh, PMJ Abhim as uh, uh, this uh, uh, Aishman, uh, the Pradhan Mantri Abhim, that is Aishman Bharat Health Infrastructure Mission, as, as well as the 15th Finance Commission with the impetus and focus on infrastructure investment, the requirement of HR is going to increase. The way the structures are there, previously we were having a ratio of 1 is to 3 for, for 1 MB, for 3 for one specialist, they used to be have three medical doctors. So we have to see that how we narrow this gap between this. Simultaneously, as most in most of the district hospitals, they have been upgraded to medical colleges. 
we have to go back to the board committee. We all talk about board committee, which has envisaged to have 2,000 bedded hospitals at a block level. So that kind of envision has happened way back in early 40s and mid 40s. Looking at that, there was a requirement that we should be having some, we have to think out of the box to address the shortage of specialists. The FRUs are there, first referral units are there. We all talk about that the specialist 80%, 50%, some of the institutes, uh, of the institutions at uh, community level, they have a shortage right up to 90% of the specialists are vacant. Different models have been tried in the district also, at least one institution in a district that should be saturated and providing all the set of services. So in IPHS uh, 2022 guidelines, we are having that at least 12 specialties should be made available at the district hospital. So these are all the reforms thing and the intent is there. But to address the shortage of specialists, we have tried different methods. We have tried the medical college route and NMC route. The number of specialists has also increased. We have tried the NBEMS route, that is the DNB route. But still, the, if we go with the same pace, it will take around two to three decades to address the issue of specialist shortage. And if you want to saturate the district hospitals or the if the district hospitals are upgraded to medical colleges, you require to have something different. So the thought process behind that was that why can't we utilize the PG students, or the senior residents? Because they are more or less a specialist. They are specialists in waiting. Why can't we use the services so that that specialist service is made available in the district hospital? That was the thought process behind that. So as a result, after a lot of discussions, other things, when uh, we had an opportunity, when I was working in Niti IO, and our member was uh, the BOG uh, Board of Governors Chairman, uh, Chairman of uh, MCI, as well MCI. So this thoughts percolated, and after a lot of deliberation, it was agreed that we can have this kind of program where we, well, as, a, as, uh, as a result of which, we can at least address the issue of specialist shortage in this district hospital. At least around the clock, around the year, some specialists would be available. And after this DRP program, we can utilize the specialized services which are available for increasing the DNBC salt. So that's another work stream which we are working. This was the background behind this. And I will uh, be starting with my presentation. Uh, I will be sharing my screen. The question which you have asked that ki how the community medicine can utilize uh, the district residency program. So the background I have given, but a uh, lot of potential is there ki how the community medicine or the people like us, they can utilize this residency program. Because if you look at the way things are moving, the exposure, because of some of the uh, department, they do have uh, the Urban Health and Family Welfare Center attached to them. They do have some uh, uh, PSCs attached to them. So they rotate the, uh, the PG students there. But to have an overall hands-on experience of utilizing the data at the district level, utilizing how a leadership uh, role about the hospital planning and planning of services can happen, how we can use a how we can uh, communicate better with the patients and the other residents, how we can plan the other activities. Because uh, for any program, the district uh, is the nodal. And uh, around that node, all of the things, you have to think that how the extension can happen. That kind of thing can be visualized once we have an exposure, hands-on exposure at the district level. So looking at that, district uh, residency program was initiated. It's an initiative of Government of India, which will provide hands-on experience to the postgraduate medical students. The program has been made mandatory for all MD and MS, MD, MS students in the broad specialty that requires, and it requires students to complete three months rotation in a district hospital. So that throughout the years, some specialties, some specialists are available at the district hospital. Community medicine being a broad field that encompasses the prevention, diagnosis, treatment of disease in the community, as well as focus on public health, epidemiology, and health promotion. 
So it's a good opportunity for the PG students to get an exposure at the district level setting. District hospital is a posting if you are saying, but district hospital and the, the chief medical or the DHO offices, they work in tandem. It's not that they are separate unit. And whatever programs, the health programs are there in which uh, the district hospital support is required, that support is extended to the program. Here, the main aspect is how to learn about preventing the disease in the community, how to have a community diagnosis, as well as how the measures are being taken through the national programs and other programs for treatment of the disease at the community level. This district residency program provides students with an opportunity to learn about these topics in the real world settings. From the college side, whatever you have learned, we see that key how it is applied. The application aspect in the real world settings is the buzzword and the catch in all these settings. So what has happened uh, when the erstwhile board of governors in supervision of uh, Medical Council of India? Uh, this discussion happened uh, started happening since 2018-19, uh, but the gadget notification happened in 2020. After that, a lot of deliberation discussions happened with the principal secretaries of all the states. And after orienting them, there was a consensus that, yes, we can roll it out. So roll, rolling plan was also there. So what are the key aspects of this? The background I have already mentioned, the doctor needs to be trained they should be near to the community and see that key, how that can happen. Then the objective is to expose the postgraduate to the district health system. We are all understand about the health system. Health system, that means the institutions. If you talk about the revenue, revenue contemporary of the health system, at the revenue level for four to five villages, uh, they usually call it as a section. And uh, for uh, 20 villages, they call a 20 to 30 villages, they call it a sector. And uh, at uh, about 100 to 120 villages, that's a block. And block used to be the planning, uh, block used to be the planning uh, unit for uh, all the planning aspects. Just a moment, just a moment. Okay, sorry. So we have to see that uh, how the postgraduates are exposed to the district system. We, the program envisages to acquaint them with the various aspects of the national health program. We have been all learning about the national health programs, but how these national health programs are implemented once it comes to the district level. Because culmination of all the activities in the national program, all vertical programs, the verticality is maintained up to the district level. After that, the convergence happened. And the, this convergence is more appreciated once the program comes to the block level, where all the program converges. We can see that key how we can orient them with the services provided by various cadres under NHM. They will appreciate, we, they have, we have been talking about NHM, National Health Mission, but how this, the various cadres under NHM we have talked about the medical cadre. We have talked. We we are we are aware about the specialist services. Now here you will interact with the, the management cadre. That means which looks after the HR, logistics, the procurement, and the other aspects, financing aspect. Then you will have an exposure to learn about the how a multidisciplinary team approach is required for addressing the health related issues and the for managing the health programs. In doing so, the PGs will strengthen the district services uh, related to them. Because if you have got an exposure to any district program, one of the main challenging aspects is having new ideas and the capacities to execute that new ideas. The PGs with their acquaintance with the recent trends, the knowledge and other things, and with exposure to this kind of system, they will strengthen the district health hospitals. And how we define a district hospital as per the Gazette? It's a functional public sector or government funded hospital, not less than 100 beds, but it is now extended to the private sector also. The definition of district health system in all public sector, government funded uh, hospitals and facilities, CAC, PSC, sub-health center, urban health center, etc., plus community outreach system. 
is not only limited to hospital facilities, community outreach system. That means your health workers, the ASHA workers, and your intermediary in between, the multi-purpose health supervisors, the uh, MPW, male and female, both. And the public health services for implementing the health program. You will have an hands-on experience of understanding all these things. The district residence program is a compulsory three months uh, residential rotation for all PGs in the third, fourth, and fifth semester, and shall be called as the, the people in the third, fourth, and fifth semester, they will be called as district residents. The training and responsibility of district residents in the clinical specialty will work under the supervision of a district residency program coordinator. The clinical responsibilities like OPD, IPD, casualty, and other areas, along with night duties, will come in this. In the pre and para clinical, they would be trained with the within the available avenues in coordination with the district health officer and the chief medical officer. The questions so which have been raised by many is that uh, they will be only assigned with the clinical assigned duties. Since this is work in progress and the scheme is evolving, initially there would be challenges and uh, the people would be just uh, seeing that how the deficiencies and other things of their institution are being fulfilled by this. Uh, uh, by his faculty. But with, as the time progresses, you will find the more avenues uh, of working in the district health systems and executing and helping the district program managers and seeing that how the program converges at the block level, uh, what are the challenges in the program implementation, how they are addressing it, and uh, how they usually monitor the uh, programs and the outcomes and how they can influence and do the support supervision for the uh, associate staff who are doing the outreach activities. Uh, there would be examples of uh, lab, forensic, pharmacy, general duties, managerial roles, and program, et cetera, which we have mentioned. It's not moving. It's... Sorry, screen is not moving. Yes. The other aspect is the stipend in the leave. Uh, the PG shall draw full stipend one week, weekly holiday by rotation, leave benefits as per rules of parent college and university. For the training and certification, quality of training, attendance, performance will be monitored by uh, district, uh, district uh, uh, this uh, residency program coordinator, the parent college. And, and would be accessible to state uh, and the national steering committees. The district residents will continue to remain in contact with PG teachers, department, remotely to, uh, and the department remotely to participate in case discussions, general clubs, thesis discussions, etc. The COVID has taught us to how to utilize the online systems, the virtual platforms. So it won't be a problem for uh, many of the PGs. They will be remaining in touch with the the parent uh, department and can participate in the class, case discussion, general clubs, etc. After satisfactory completion of the uh, district residential program, program, we have seen that he, it can be made an essential to appear in the final exam, or final PG examination. That means the district residential program has, uh, this residency program has to be satisfactorily completed as it has been made essential to appear for the final PG examination. The district uh, residency program coordinators will issue certificate of satisfactory completion. That means the uh, uh, close log and other things uh, need to be in place for uh, monitoring all this thing. The responsibility of the medical college would be for placing the PG students at the disposal of state government or the union territories. They have to see that the faculty is there to continue to, the, the faculty which are there in the medical college, they continue to provide guidance to the PG students either remotely or either through visits. A committee can, is to be set up under the academic cell for district residency program. These are the three things which the medical college is supposed to do. Application for appropriate announcement of PG seats is also there. As I mentioned uh, in my initial remarks, after one year of implementation of DRP, Medical colleges are encouraged to apply for proportionate increase in PGC as compensation for potential compromise of work in a stitching hospital. So this, this is about the application and how we can increase the What is the responsibility of state government and 
uh, the union territories in this. They have to set up uh, for a for a joint coordination by the Department of Health and this one nodal officer is to be appointed. The nodal officer will identify and designate suitable hospital develop placement plan six months prior uh, to the placement of this uh, PG student. And he would be responsible for grievance redressal and undertake rule place allotment of the training facility. It's not that in month they have been posted as happened during the initial phase in some of the states. It has to be well thought of, well planned, six months prior to the placement, so that whatever things are there, that can be taken care. Of. The state government uh, has to provide the uh, amenities to the district residents. The district residents will remain under jurisdiction of state union territories. The district uh, resident uh, program nodal officer, after they are been. Uh, uh, assigned or allotted, they will be remaining under these people. If the state and duties cannot absorb all the PG student post, post into other states and duties can be explored, that kind of flexibility is given. This is uh, more so in some of the states with the uh, scarce medical district hospital, it doesn't have adequate facility to accommodate all these things. And this would be facilitated by a national coordination. For PG students from Northeast, Donor states permitted to undertake undergo un, undergo uh, district residency in their respective states. It may consider playing additional uh, the states may consider paying additional honorarium to district residents, incentivize posting to remote and difficult areas. They can be designated as senior health officials of the district health system as uh, district program coordinators. District program. Uh, district residency program coordinator will coordinate between medical college and the state nodal officer. The district program resident program coordinator will oversee all administrative aspect of the district residence. So, what is the responsibility of NNC? They will develop a transparent electronic platform to facilitate and ensure rule based placement of PG residents. It will develop requisite norms, tools, guidelines, guide, guidance for implementation like logbooks, feedback forms, learning resources, etc. Maintain dashboard and monitor quality of this district residency program. At the national level, a national steering committee would be constituted in consultation with the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. This will be chaired by a nominee of uh, national uh, national medical commission, and nominated members would be of uh, the additional secretary and joint secretary rank who looks after the medical education aspect of the ministry. There would be nominees of the director general health services, and there would be at least six uh, representative of the state governments of the UT. And this committee, national sharing committee, will be submitting a quarterly report on a six monthly basis. It, they would be submitting quarterly reports. Apart from that, you, at the national level, there is a national coordination cell which would be established by the National Steering Committee under uh, NMC and would be responsible for smooth, efficient implementation of district residence program and grievance redressal at the national level. Similarly, at the state level, a state level steering committee would be constituted, which would be chaired by uh, principal secretary, secretary health, and would be comprising of principal secretary or secretary medical education, director health services, Director of Medical Education, Registrar of Medical University, and Deans of Medical Colleges. At that time, when uh, this uh, gadget was notified, uh, uh, it was envisaged to start with the joining of PG in 2022. The batch of PGs which would be joining in 2021. It would be started from there. So now it has been rolled out, and you will be seeing a lot of results. Some of the states, some promising results are there. Some of the states... Uh, they are having some issues, the grievances, which as the things are evolving, slowly and slowly, all would be rectified. So what are the benefits of this uh, district residency program? It is an opportunity to learn about the health needs of the community. We have talked about the pet needs and the health needs. The health needs, what the community, what the health needs means what you feel that the community requires. You will be able to appreciate and balance the, the health needs and the health needs of the community. The community wants something and you say that hey, I prescribe this, you take this. That kind of approach will not happen. And as a result, what happens, you see the program starts. Here it is an opportunity to learn about the health needs 
of the community as well as how to balance the health needs of the community. The community required a safe drinking water. That's a health need. But we push that the communities have anemic and we want to address the issue of anemia. How you balance both these aspects so that it's a win-win for both of these. That's an opportunity to learn about this. It's a, it's a, for the community medicine, it's an area where you can get hands-on experience in public health. <clears throat> public health is a very sensitive topic to talk about. It is uh, in the concurrent list. That means uh, both states and the centers, they can uh, act on that. And apart from that, public health is very, very politically sensitive. No, no, none of the government, they want any starvation deaths. None of the government, they want any deaths due to malaria. None of the other, other communicable things which are of public health importance. And you see, after the COVID time, the public health has got a prominence. Now people, they have started talking about public health. They understand the terminology which has been used in public health. And the public health uh, practitioners and other things, they, people appreciate the work which they are doing. At the, in the district health residency program, is an opportunity to know about the programs, how they are implemented, what are the challenges, who are the persons who are facilitating that. And with your skills and background into the research, you get you will get an opportunity to at least uh, develop some protocols or proposals for uh, doing operational research uh, uh, in your future career and other things. Apart from that, uh, it would give a chance for you to improve your skills in epidemiology. We have been all talking about epidemiology. We do have an IDSP program in which we have a district level epidemiologist. But here we will get an uh, opportunity to see you can be part of the rapid response teams uh, or you can assist the rapid response team which goes into the field for uh, investigating epidemics or any outbreaks. So that kind of, apart from that, you would be exposed to first-hand hands-on data about the uh, profile of a particular area. Whatever you have learned during your epidemiology classes, it would give a chance to at least harness your skills in understanding the data, time, place, person, distribution, and other things, other things which you have, to, why the disease is happening, who are the affected, that kind of exposure and that kind of uh, opportunity would be available to them. And you can harness your skills on that. So you can see how, the, how a presentation has to be done if you want to communicate to a non-medical non or a person in the administration, in the political circle, what kind of skills are would be required of communicating epidemiology to these people. It's not uh, that means you have to talk about all technicalities, but communicating the technical aspects in a common language also, you can develop skills during your posting at the district level. The other important aspect is we have been talking about health promotion. But here also, you will get an opportunity what health promotional activities are happening. You will have, you will be exposed to the IC activities right from interpersonal communication, which the training is happening, which with the ASHA or the health work, uh, the, our community health volunteers, they usually do. So how the health worker, they do interpersonal communication, how they are impacting the behavioral change in the person to behavioral change communication, what IC activities are happening, what other health promotional activities are happening, how the wellness component of the health and wellness center has been operationalized. So this is would be an opportunity to witness all this thing, see for yourself that the, what is happening and how you can contribute to that. It will give a chance to think out of box for seeing that the, whether the existing strategy which has been used for health promotional activities in, the, in any program, why it is not making any dent or why it is not being impact. You can always think of making that thing impactful. You can always suggest uh, the district administration or the district people. You will get an opportunity because sky is the limit for health promotional activities. Then, as I mentioned earlier, that at the district level, if you talk about, it's not only the doctor. 
most of us feel that the doctor as a leader, we in the PSM part thing, we think we have been talking about doctor as a leader, that leadership skills will also be developed. We would be getting an opportunity to develop that leader skill. Leader is not that leading from the front. He has to take people along. So if you look at the number of people, if you look, look at the number of people working in the district, at the CSC, at the block, at the health and wellness center, it's all multidisciplinary team. At the community health center, you would know how the CHO is functioning, how is managing with the two health workers who is having, how is managing a team of uh, uh, the ASHA extension, ASHA workers who are doing the extension and the, the community level work. You will see that how you can act as a leader for managing this multidisciplinary team. Because for a successful health program, it has to be a multidisciplinary team. It cannot be a single person-led team. And as a community medicine practitioner, so this is an opportunity to harness our leadership skill and see that key, how we can exploit and explore the potential of a multiple multi multidisciplinary team and see how this multidisciplinary team can be more galvanized for effective implementation of this program. As I mentioned in the epidemiology part, that means epidemiology is not purely science of uh, uh, epidemics, but it's also a politically sensitive science. It gives an opportunity, I have mentioned that, the, how to communicate the technical jargons or the technical message for a non-technical or a general population. Here comes the role that if you are able to communicate better, you start building relation with the community members. They should know, they should understand what is the benefit of all these things. The moment the, you are there, so this role will come to that you have to communicate with the community members. As we have talked about the community participation, here you will witness how the community members are involved into the management of the institution. You would be seeing about the hospital development committees, which are having representation of the communities right up to the block and the PSC level. At the lower level also, you do have a village health and uh, nutrition committee, sanitation committee with representation of the community members. So you will appreciate how the communities are involved into the management of the whole system and how the community participation has improved the work, working and functioning of uh, uh, the particular institution and how they are helping in executing the programs, how they are helping in organizing our sessions, how they are improving in the other aspects of our outreach programs. In nutshell, it will give you an overall understanding of the healthcare system so that you, the posting in the three months time, where, wherever you are there, so it will give an overview of the healthcare system, give ideas, of harnessing your skills, understanding the health needs of the people, gaining experience in the public health, developing your skills in epidemiology, learning about the nuances of health promotion, experiences of working with a multidisciplinary team, then overall uh, becoming a good leader of managing all these things. So this, in, I conclude that the uh, district residency program is a valuable opportunity for community medicine PGs to learn about the real world challenges of providing healthcare in the community. And we need to take advantage of this opportunity so that we develop our skills and knowledge so that we can make a difference in the health of the community. The challenge lies here. Our vision is that by 2047, each and every village needs to be healthy. That means you see the immense potential which is there to this board. Because the challenge which is coming is we do have a lot of specialties, but we have to see that how we cut across the communities and take our knowledge to this community so that we can create a better uh, place for the future generation to come. I stop here. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you so much, sir. There is always long-sighted vision and a lot of hard work in bringing any positive change. I am definitely sure our young graduates are now much more informed about district residency program. Sir, our students and all the postgraduate residents have also asked a couple of questions. With your permission, shall I go ahead and ask you some? Yes. One of them is, 
that with respect to district residency program, as the residents are posted and they know the, at the basic level of healthcare delivery, they will learn about it. Why can't medicine PGs be involved in any national program or posted in malaria unit, TB unit, etc.? Uh, uh, one is it's a good question, but if you look at the, the way the district residency program is structured, uh, they would be posted at the district uh, units on a rotation basis. As a medicine specialist, they have they, they have to treat the patients coming there for malaria, TB, and they would be exposed to the OPDs of OPDs, which would be the fever OPDs and the TB OP, TB clinics. They would be exposed to that. It's not that key, they are left up, left about, but at the district level, as uh, things culminate uh, into uh, a single funnel from where all the activities are uh, uh, flush out into the uh, district and the uh, blocks. So they will have an opportunity. The medicine students will also have, have an opportunity to look at the programs. If they are interested in some program, obviously, based on the discussion of the district resident program coordinator, uh, they can be assigned that job. But initially, as the scheme is evolving, initially what the tendency would be to put all these people in managing the wards and other things. But we have to carve our way and say that hey, I will do this also, but I want to learn this also. So it has to be a trade-off between hey, I will do this, but I will want to learn this also. But as the things are evolving, as, when a new thing comes, people will try to take advantage of that. As a result, what will happen? We, we will find that hey, they would be posting there in the wards, the OPD, so that their institution is managed. But as a, as in when the coordination and other things happen, the district resident uh, residency program coordinator is made more aware that this thing will not happen, and you will see that the proper placement and allotment and other things are put in place. Till such time, I think uh, these are all teething problems, and uh, we see that how we address that. That the coordination and grivas uh, mechanism is there, and that will take care of us. Yes, sir. Sir, also one of our students have asked that how is it different from the PHC, that is the primary health posting, sir? And uh, because is not the PHC posting enough for community medicine? And what is the difference between a district residency program and a PHC posting? The thanks that the, the PG students, they have asked it. In P PHC program, it's essentially they are having the same ambit, but they are managing the PHC. They are the administrative head or assisting the administrative head of that institution. But in this district residency program, is a national program, the public health activities. At the PSC, you are just following the instruction what is supposed to be done at that level. But here you are learning how the programs are being executed, how what is the thought process behind it. You would be exposed to the different review meetings, uh, different other aspects of that. And you will be exposed to how the outbreak investigation, the other thing. At the PSC also, they do that. But there would be little overlap, but it would be a more a graduation. After you say that okay, after a PG, it's just like a PhD kind of thing. And more exposure to a similar kind of thing, but in with more rigor and more uh, more structured way. In Otherwise, in PSC posting, uh, it's uh, managing OPD, managing that institution, as well as the outreach activity. That's only limited to that. But here it is not limited to that aspect. It is encompassing into the other aspect, the functioning of the district hospital, right from the functioning of the district hospital to the health and wellness center. In total, all the institutions fall in line in this district residency program. It's not only not limited to only PSC. There you are a medical officer of that PSC, managing that PSC, getting hands-on experience. But you will, here you will get an example of engaging with the, uh, uh, the your, uh, what to say, the hospital management committee meetings also. You will get an exposure. Every month meeting happens. How the committee members behave. You will get an exposure. How uh, community members, if they are coming, or the leaders, if they are coming, how things are being managed at that level. That kind of exposure is more as compared to the PSC program. And sir, as the students are very much interested in publications and studies and research, so what will be the scope of having a project during this posting? They can always do that because uh, 
So they are exposed to a lot of data in the health system. You see, in India, you will find doctors who might have treated around a lack of uh, COVID patients. But where yes, are the yes. publications? In the Western world, what happens is uh, the treating doctor and the publication team, they are different. Here is an opportunity because a lot of qualitative data would be made available to them. If they are having dig for qualitative research, it is an opportune time, three months time for data collection and other things, I can they can do that in the uh, settings. And after that, they can always analyze the data, share the data with them, and they can publish it. Nobody is stopping them. Apart from that, they can analyze the OPD data. They can analyze the data because most of the hospital now, in the hospital, they are, they are using the digital tools for this. Even the patient feedback mechanism is there in the hospital. They can utilize that data if they are having a research play. They can always have projects in that direction. So, more or less, uh, in, in the coming things, I think the, uh, the focus should be on use of the technology and the digital tools for seeing how to improve the patient experience as well as uh, improving the delivery of the services. That would be the two key, area, key areas where they can always think and identify research areas and move in that direction. Definitely, sir. Sir, last but not the least, uh, how would the newly joined PSM residents utilize this posting to the best possible way what would be your guiding principle to the young residents who have newly joined into this? So one of one of the thing is uh, I congratulate them that they, they have taken uh, uh, the community medicine sphere uh, as a career uh, career path. The sky is the limit for them, provided they are having aptitude for pursuing further. So initially it appears to be non glamorous, but uh, as you progress further you will feel contented and you will feel happy that you have joined the pain thing. Because after doing a lot of work, people usually venture into community medicine. So it's a right opportunity that you just harness your skills and perfect yourself. Whenever you are posted in an institution, try to understand the rationale behind what the institution is doing. If they are exposed to any program, try to go behind the program. What are the objectives of the program? Whether the program is being able to deliver to the objectives or not. If not, then what are the things which need to be done in a different way? No need to reinvent things. You see that these are all the intended objectives, whether the program has reached that objectives, and what can be done for this. If they are able to uh, evaluate themselves, evaluate any of the things, I think uh, they can make uh, best use of the time which they spend in this uh, uh, third, fourth, or fifth semester. So that would be the best time to utilize so that they are having an, their outlook needs to change after this program, after this posting. So that they can adapt whatever they are learning in the medical college. They can visualize that, yes, this can be this can be applied in certain way. And so that they can use it further. Okay, I think yes, uh, it's a right portion time for them to understand what they have learned in the classroom. Apply that knowledge here. See that what are the gaps in their understanding and see what the uh, takeaway back so that they can improve their understanding and skills when they come back. And the outcome is that they should be excelling in their exams and they should be excelling in the long cases, short cases, and the uh, other ones. Yes. I usually see that. If they are able to understand that, change their outlook, I think uh, their performance in the examination will also be increased. Okay. Definitely, sir. Sir, we thank you a lot for sharing with us the pearls of wisdom on this district residency program. And we also thank you on behalf of IPSME Connect. Coming to an end of this discussion, I would like to take a moment to thank our PG coordinating team. Our sincere gratitude to Dr. A.M. Kadri, sir, President IPSM, and all the office bearers for supporting us in this PG lecture series. Please do subscribe to the IPSM eConnect channel to stay tuned to our further events. As the moderator of the session, this is Dr. Priyavani signing out. Thank you, everyone.